Hey everyone, my name is Roberta. I am so excited for today because we are on the long weekend. It is September. Personally, my favorite month of the year. I love September, I love the weather and sweaters, all of that, so I'm super excited to be speaking to you today. And this is hopefully our last um, online-only service. We are going to be in Scotiabank Theatre next week. I know Mark gave you all the details for that, but we are so excited. Please, please be there if you can, be in the room. Um, yeah, we're very excited for that. So for this message today, what's interesting is usually when Mark will kind of go about four to six months ahead of time and sort of say, this is what we're preaching on, like these are our topics, all that kind of stuff. But for this weekend, he didn't have anything. And personally, I like when he has something because it gives me, you know, direction. I sort of know where I'm going with it. Um, but as I was prepping for it, I said to Mark, I'm like, man, this is kind of where I'm feeling with things. And he told me, that's so crazy. I was actually gonna tell you to preach on that a couple days ago, but then I thought, oh, I'll leave it, I'll let her pray about it. So. Hopefully this is, I mean, this has to be from God because we're both on the same page here, but I am excited. And today what I'm really speaking on, I've titled my message, Shepherd, Warrior, King. Um, I'm speaking about the life of King David. I'm gonna go a little bit into who King, da King David was. And this message is really about seasons. And that's what I feel like God has been working in my heart in this last little bit is seasons of life. What season am I in? How do I own the season well? How do I transition? How do I move forward? All of that stuff. And seasons in life are important and maybe if you're in the middle of a season maybe you're at the end of a season but i think it's really important to know what season you're in because then you're going to take everything you can from it you're going to know kind of what god is doing in your heart how he's working in your life all of that so i am excited and again i said i was going to be talking about king david so for those of you who have maybe not heard of king david he was a man who had went through a lot of seasons in his life he was often referred to as a man after god's own heart so he really loved god he wanted to do you know what god wanted but he didn't always get it right as we all are in that position in life and king david was not always a king see he actually started as a shepherd and he went from shepherd to warrior to king and that's why we're actually speaking about him today because i think that king david really did own his seasons well sometimes he struggled in them but he knew his season and he knew his place and he knew what god was doing in his life and as a church we're coming into a new season we're going from online only church to having services in person that's exciting you know i think we've worked really hard we've done this but as people what season are we in what is god doing in our life and so this first season that i want to talk about is the preparation season so this is the shepherd season that we're going to talk about in king david's life um, but prep that's an important season. I actually think preparation is one of the most vital seasons. I mean, they're all very important, but there is something special about preparation. And often, sometimes we're in an only preparation season, but I feel as though preparation kind of works its way into all the seasons. We're always preparing. We're always getting ready for what God is doing. And I'm actually gonna begin by reading in 1 Samuel 17, 34 to 36. I'm gonna also give some explanation along the way. But David, so right now David is a shepherd, he has not become king yet, said to Saul, and now Saul was the king. So, but David said to Saul, your servant used to keep sheep for his father, but there came a lion or a bear and took a lamb from the flock. So I went after him and struck him and delivered it out of his mouth. And if he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and struck him and killed him. So what David is saying is, hey, when no one was around, when animals like bears or lions attacked the sheep, I actually stopped them. I, I went out, I ripped them from their mouth, I saved them. So he's letting him know, this is what I did in my sh as a shepherd. I wasn't just sitting around. I wasn't just, you know, oh, look, there's a sheep. Like I was actually on the offense. I was protecting the flock. This is what I was doing. Your servant has struck down both lions and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them, for he has defied the armies of the living God. So what David is saying is, hey, there's this Goliath, who is this Philistine they're referring to, he's this big, strong warrior, and no one was able to take him down. But David said, no, what God did, what I was able to do in private, what God was working in my heart, how I was able to take down lions and bears, has actually prepared me to take down Goliath. I'm ready to do it. And no one would have known because it was done in private. It was done behind the scenes. See, God was preparing him. No one saw what David did as a shepherd, yet God did. Like God saw all of it. He saw his heart. And actually David, we know, was anointed. Well, maybe you don't know, but now you can. Was actually anointed as a shepherd saying, hey, one day you're going to be king. And it wasn't in that moment that he became king. It was years and years later. But what God knew his heart and he was preparing David for what he had for him. 
See, if you want to achieve things in your life, in your marriage, in your business, um, in, in you know whatever the insert and in school, all of that stuff, you actually have to be willing to do what no one else is doing. Like if you want to achieve what no one else is achieving, you got to do things that no one else is doing. And what's really interesting about this concept, when we actually step out and do things that no one else is doing, people will begin to be like, well, look at how God is working in your life, but you've been preparing, you've been working. You know, even at Rose Church, if we want to reach people that no one else is reaching, we gotta do things that no one else is doing. There's gotta be a new, and we only know what the new is when we actually take our preparation season seriously, when we're listening to God, when we're, we're seeing what he's doing in our souls. Because until you can win the private battle, you will never win the public battle. So what, what is in your heart? What are you doing? What's behind the scenes? See, it's important that you can lead yourself before you can lead others. I didn't even coin that. That is a very common phrase. Um, you can give me credit if you want. But you cannot lead others until you lead yourself. You can't lead in your business. You can't lead in your family until you learn to lead your own soul. So if it's hard for you to do things like, like disciplines of reading your Bible, meditation, worship, all those things, it's gonna be hard for you to lead in other areas. And I'm not saying this to make you feel bad, but to realize, God, how can you prepare me? How can I grow as a leader? So if you're in a season of preparation, it's good to ask God, what are you doing? And the thing about prep is it can take years, like seasons can take years. They're not like Canadian seasons, you know, four months and then it's over or, you know, six months of winter in Winnipeg and then it's done. Seasons can be years and years when God is working on our hearts. And you know, I wanna be honest, the prep season is difficult. I think it's like a discipline, it's working out, it's working those muscles, it's hard for me. I'm always having to tell myself, God, like help me. It's almost like mind over, mind over matter because it's not easy to get up early and to read your Bible. It gets easier over time because you've worked the muscle, you know, you've gotten into the habit of it, but it's difficult to begin those things but it's important to do it. So if you're like me and you're like, well, this preparation season is hard. It's hard that no one's seeing all the work I'm doing. It's hard that like I'm not getting the recognition, you know, I think I should be getting. That's actually a good thing. It's a sign you're in the right season, that you're doing preparation right, that you're doing it well. So if you are in good company, Proverbs 18, 14, a man's spirit will endure sickness, but a crushed spirit who can bear, because our souls matter, guys, especially in the preparation season. You know, soul care is not, you know, getting a massage or, or having a bath. I mean, those are good things. You know, it's like good to take care and take some time for yourself. But soul care is spending time in community, is spending time with Jesus, it's spending time in worship, in his presence. It's not even complicated. But we make it complicated because the world is like, ah, you know, that's my world right now, blah. Um, we make it complicated. God makes it simple. Just spend time with me. That's what the preparation season is. And see, what God is preparing you for is so essential to go into the next. So you gotta know you're in this season, this kind of season of like, hey God, what are you getting me ready for? And we're not always, we actually are not always, we usually do not know um, what that next season is. We can't fully understand it. Even when we step into something, like we know, hey, I'm taking this next step in my career or we're about to have a baby. Um, you don't fully know until it comes, right? Like all the first time parents, can you like, I'm on that boat. I had no idea what it was gonna be like to have a baby. Now I know because you know we, we walked through it, but as much as I prepared, which was good, I wasn't fully ready because it, you just don't know until you step into it. And so what I see this next season is, is the transition season. So warrior, so we're talking about David now. He's gone from the shepherd, now he's a warrior. And we're calling this the transition season. So we're, you know, a lot of us think the transition season should be exciting, right? Well, I'm moving into the next thing that God has for me. Like, this is amazing. Um, but transition hurts. Transition is painful. Because it often means we have to say goodbye. It often means change is happening. And as excited as we can be for that next season, it can be a grieving process. So let me just encourage you, if you're in a transition season and you're thinking, well, it hurts, am I in the wrong place? No, you're in the right place. It's going to hurt. Um, I often actually, now when I think of transition, if you've ever given birth, and I'm, I'm gonna give a lot of birth stories in this as I become a mother now. Um, actually, this is the only one for this sermon, but I'll warn for, further, for other sermons. But in the transition period, as you're giving birth, they actually talk about this being very painful because your body's kind of gone from like, it's getting ready, it's getting ready, and then it's like transition, you're about to like get ready to have your baby. 
Often women will throw up, they'll feel very sick. Like I felt extremely sick in the transition phase. I was excited to have Rome. I was excited to give birth to her, but it was a really difficult in that transition phase. And even further for that, when Mark and I stepped out to plant Rose, guys, we were so excited. Like this is amazing. Like God had spoken to us years and years ago about this church and now here we are like getting ready to do it. But it was also painful because we had to leave our old church. And we love that church, we still love that church, but it was hard. Although those people can still be in our life, there's a change in it, you know? We're going to lead this thing, it, it changes the relationship. So transition is painful. And for King David, his transition for him was as a warrior. So he was fighting battles um, for King Saul. So he wasn't king yet, he wasn't in that, in that spot of his, of his life. Um, but he was very powerful, he had influence, um, but he was terrified in this season. Because in his transition season, Saul did not take well to how much um, influence David was having, how many people wanted to follow him. You know, the people were like, man, look at all that David can do. Saul got jealous. And so David found himself in a season where he was being, you know, hated and hunted by Saul. And we read here in 1 Samuel 24, 8, After this, David got up and went out to the cave and called to Saul, saying, My lord, the king, when Saul looked at him, David put his face to the ground, showing him much respect. David said to Saul, why do you listen to the words of men who say David wants to hurt you? See, your eyes have seen how the Lord gave you to me today in the cave, and some told me to kill you, but I had pity on you. So the background of this story is that people are saying, man, David, just kill Saul. He's not a good king. Take over, you're a warrior. Take your rightful place as king. But David knew it wasn't the right time yet. And so he showed Saul, hey, I had an opportunity to kill you. I actually didn't do it though. Like I want to be right with God. So I'm showing you that I'm actually respecting your leadership. I'm respecting who you are in this transition season. And it's actually really crazy because I feel like this is where we're seeing a bit of a mix of the seasons. So. David was still being prepared to be king. There's still a bit of that preparation as he's, you know, in this transition season for years. But we also see the pain is of transition. Him slowly, you know, becoming, gaining influence and soon he will become king. And I've seen so many people stay in the preparation phase because of the pain of the transition phase. They're never able to get over that because it's so painful. It's like, well, maybe God didn't actually want it because if he wanted me to really do this next thing, he would just make it like, you know, the heavens would open, everyone would be cheering me on and I would just be there. But that's often not how transition works, right? There's the pain, there's the, you know, people misunderstanding, you feeling, man, why don't people get me? And all of this stuff is happening in the transition season and that's very normal. So if you're feeling that right now, you're in good company. That is a very normal feeling to be, have, to be having. And I think a key to the transition phase is endurance. It's knowing in your mind that this is gonna be difficult. It's spending that time with God. You know how you prepped and you were spending all that time in the word, learning, gleaning. It's taking those lessons into the transition phase, knowing that God is working. Because he needs strong warriors. He needs us to be strong for the next season, which I'm calling arrival or king. Because David was a king at this point, we'll say king slash queen, whatever, whatever you wanna call it there. Um, is arrival. So we need to be strong for the arrival. And that is the third season I'm going to talk about. I'm going to read here in 2 Samuel verse 5. All the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron and said, we are your own flesh and blood. In the past, while Saul was king over us, you were the one who led Israel on their military campaigns. And the Lord said to you, you will shepherd my people, Israel, and you will become their ruler. So David is finally becoming king. He was a shepherd, no one saw him, very anonymous season. He was a warrior, the pain, you know, learning all the leadership lessons, all of that. Now he has become king. And leadership is heavy. You know, isn't it interesting? We all want to lead, but then we get there and we have the very real problems of leadership, the problems of people, and it, and it, it can hold us down, which is why it's so important to be prepared, which is why it's so important to transition well. Because how you end one season, guys, is how you're going to enter the next. Like if you leave one season and it disgruntled and angry, you're gonna enter that season disgruntled and angry. So it's important in your own heart. Now you can't control others around you, how they're gonna to react to your season. Sometimes people are gonna you know, not understand maybe why you're transitioning or, or why things are happening that way, but you can control your heart. You can control your mind. You can control your relationship with God and how you treat people in the process. It was so important. And I think that so often people never arrive. 
you know? I remember my grandpa, I would always say, people would say like, oh, that person has so much potential. And my grandpa's like, well, you know, potential is really just a fancy word for saying they never arrived. <laughs> and I think a lot of people don't arrive because of the fear. Because it's hard to step out. You know, transition is hard. Um, preparation takes discipline. It's difficult to own these seasons, but I really, really want to encourage you, it is worth it. Anytime I've been in a season of my life of preparation or transition and arrival, like I've noticed how God can do so much in my heart. Do I always get it right? No. Do, we, do any of us? No. But God will continue to work. And what I know is that, and I really believe as I was preparing for this message, as I was writing it out, that there's someone who needs to hear this where God's saying, it's time. It's time to step out. It's time to take that role. It's time to make that change. God is calling you to it. He has prepared you for it. You're not always gonna know what each and every step is. That's what God's for. That's why we need faith. That's why we need the Holy Spirit to be speaking to us. Because even in all the pain of, of preparation, even in the pain of transition, the pain of leadership, at the end of the day, it is so worth it. Because I really pray at the end of my life, like when I look back, whenever, whenever my time is, I want people to know that Jesus cared about them. That, that they saw Jesus shining through me, that I took every opportunity I could to lead well, where people say, yeah, Roberta wasn't always perfect, but she always showed us the love of God. She always pointed us back to Jesus. And sometimes, you know, because I want to give my life to eternal things. You know what they say, can't take it with you when you're gone. You know, you can't take this, you can't take that. But you can have a legacy that lasts as eternity when you put your, when you put things into kingdom perspective. When you say, I'm gonna live my life for you, God, you actually do have eternal impact. It's not a just about what we see here. When we own our seasons well, that's the beauty of Jesus and his kingdom is that it has that impact. God invites us to be part of it. How amazing is that? And that's what we want for Rose Church, not to just be a church that's here in the now, but actually a church that has eternal impact. And do you know what I also think is amazing when we have this kingdom mindset is it breaks down division. It mends it, it brings us together because no longer are we saying, well, this or that or this, you know, the world that's so divisive right now, we're actually saying, no, we care about the kingdom. We're not gonna try to pin you against this or that. We're just gonna say Jesus matters and his kingdom is eternal. Nothing on this earth is, nothing else is. So I just, as we wrap this um, message up today, I just really want you to take some time to be like, God, what season am I in? Am I prepping, am I transitioning, or am I in the arrival part of my season? Because when we own our seasons, I really believe that the impact you're gonna have it's just gonna be massive. You're not even gonna fully know what it is when we actually let Jesus work through us. So I'm gonna pray. And as we go into worship, take time to think about that. And I'm excited as a church, let's be celebrating that we are actually stepping into a new season as a church. And I would again, just wanna invite you, come out, be part of this. Um, we love you guys so much and we have felt so supported um, in this season and the craziness of it. So yeah, let's pray. Dear Jesus, Thank you that you speak to us. Thank you for the seasons of life and thank you that no season has to be wasted. God, you use it all. You use every single part. And I pray right now you'd be speaking to hearts, that you'd be giving people confidence, that you would be taking away fear um, and that people would really see, God, what are you doing in our lives? I pray that for my heart right now. God, what season am I in? What do I need to be gleaning from this right now? Yeah, Holy Spirit, we just pray for fear to wash away and for confidence to fill us. Um, not because we have confidence in ourselves, but we have confidence in who you are, God, and who you say we are. God, thank you for this church. Thank you for every single person listening here. Um, and I pray you would bless them and be with them today. Amen. Thanks, guys.